pilots of that missing Malaysia Airlines jet most likely passed out from a lack of oxygen before the jet eventually ran out of fuel and just glided into the Indian Ocean. That's why no debris has washed ashore anywhere. Or that's the new word from Australian officials today. They released a new report that says they are confident the pilots were not controlling the plane at the end of the flight. It is Victor. highly, highly likely that the aircraft was on autopilot. Otherwise, it could not have uh, followed the orderly path that, um, has, uh, that, that, that has been identified through the satellite sightings. Officials say they have not found even a single trace of the missing plane since it disappeared back in March with nearly 240 people on board. Now, meantime, investigators say they've expanded the search area to a span of ocean 70 times larger than the area that they've already searched. It's about the size of the state of West Virginia. So a lot of searching to be done there. And in fact, Leah Gabriel is here with us. I, I heard one of the investigators say we might get lucky and find it in a day or two, or it may take as long as a year. Well, that's right. It could even take more than a year, Shep. And right now, uh, searchers from China and from Australia have been mapping the ocean floor in an area that's about 500 miles south of the area that they were looking before. You can see here, we're going to put up a map for you. You can see up here in red, this is the area that they're searching now. And up here in yellow, this is the area where they were previously searching. If you remember back in April, they were using devices to listen for the air Craft's emergency locator transmitter, but every ping just turned out to be another false lead. If we could have spent the time uh, to actually do all the work that's been done now, we probably would have chosen the, the area that's, uh, that's identified now. Uh, but of course, uh, when there was actually beeps picked up, that led everybody to want to concentrate their effort uh, on, the, on the area where those beeps had, had actually been found. Well, once they finish mapping the area, the, the mapping the ocean floor in the area that they're now searching, next they'll conduct another underwater search. And Shep, as you mentioned, that could take more than a year, all of this. Where are they getting specifically this idea that the, that the pilots passed out due to a lack of oxygen? Well, you know, it, uh, Shep, as, as someone who's been a pilot, for most experienced pilots, this has not come as a huge surprise because we've seen this kind of thing before. But specifically, they compared the little evidence they have to previous crashes. And there were several observations that they were able to point up, and we're putting those up uh, for you here now. One of them is that there was a complete loss of radio communications, even though there were at least five radios on that aircraft. Another is that there was a long period without any maneuvering, and the aircraft seemed to hold a steady altitude. And of course, that last satellite handshake that occurred um, happened at about the time when the aircraft would have run out of fuel. And it's worth mentioning that they now believe that the aircraft actually would have spiraled out of control before it crashed. Shep, that's because, you know, not all of the engines would run out of fuel at the same time. One would run out first, would cause an out-of-control flight. And I also should point out here that, that these theories, the hypoxia that, the, that mm -hmm. they ran out of oxygen, that's based on them trying to find the search area. Um, a crash investigation team would actually be the ones to determine what caused that crash. Yep, a lot of work to do. Leah, thanks very much.